Welcome to Raining Ducks. Jeff Morgan here along with Jerry Harris to my left and on my far left, Brandon Haynes. Guys, first podcast out of the gate and uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm super excited about it. You know, I, it, first one, probably, I, I certainly don't have the nerves that the Ducks had against Idaho in the first game. I was going to say, <laughs> let's hope this goes better than the first game that we saw on Saturday. Yeah, for sure. I, I got to be honest. Yeah, that's uh, it, it was a little bit rough. I think everybody was surprised what they saw. But I want to give a shout out to our main sponsor right now, Capital Nissan of Salem, right down there on Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway and Cherry Avenue right here just in North Salem. Green Acres Landscape and GA at Home, as well as Advantage Heating, Air, and Electrical. Appreciate those guys for supporting us and uh, making this thing possible, as well as Mid-Valley Media, John Strau, who's actually in here right now. Can't see him. He's in stealth mode right now, but uh, he's making everything happen behind the scenes. And we really appreciate that, too. So, guys, um, the podcast here is it's a lot of fun. We're doing the video side of things now. And, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. I mean, you're not as long as me, but I've been doing a tailgater show down at Austin Stadium since 2003. And so we're doing a little bit different. That was radio. And now we're going video, which is really stinking cool. So I actually like doing something kind of early in the week because we've got the past game fresh in our heads. And we know, OK, what went down, what went good, what went bad, and what can we improve on in the next game? So, guys, let's let's kind of dissect this Idaho game last Saturday. It was really stinking hot out there. I don't know what it was on the field, but I think it was over 100 degrees for sure because we, we were like 93, 95 in the stands. Yeah, it was it was hot. <laughs> no Brutally doubt. hot. Uh, you know, hotness aside, <laughs> I think we were really spoiled the last few years with Bo Nix and the maturity of our team. And all the expectations coming into this game, right. they were sky high. You heard the talking heads, you know, all week long, all month long, all – off season long, you know, there was an awful lot of hype to this, and the team just came out flat. It was, it was, uh, you could feel it in the crowd. Mm -hmm. It was, it was quiet. There wasn't as much excitement as normal, and in, you know, it's, it's tough to get up for the first game in, in Idaho, you know, and you know, I, I think about the guy we were talking to uh, in the radio show. He's, he's out there and he's talking about. Uh, I asked him, you know, hey, what do you think the prediction is? And, and, and he's like, well, it depends on how long you're going to play your starters, you know. And he thought right. it was going to be a blowout, too. And then we get out there and it just comes out a little, you know, the first couple of drives may be okay, but then it just was flat. Well, I th think the, the Ducks came out flat, and, you know, give credit to Kochek and Idaho Vandals. They played a heck of a game. This was probably their biggest game of the season, I would think, for non-conference opponents. And they came out, they were well-prepared, and they had a lot of energy, and it just seemed like – Oregon just did not have the energy to start the game and, uh, you know, just made some really dumb penalties that killed drives, and so that couldn't happen. You know, let's talk about teams. that. Yeah, the offensive line really stuttered a lot of drives. Uh, Connerly Jr., he was – he had that problem last year, and it mm -hmm. looks like he hasn't solved whatever that is right now. And I think he had at least two of those offensive line penalties or, or uh, false, false starts. starts yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you have to eliminate those things because if you can't eliminate those, then that's really going to be a problem because that down in the – especially in the red zone, if you have those penalties, you're going back five yards, and all of a sudden you've got, you know, what, first and 13, first and goal to go on the 13-yard line, that's going to be a problem. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, this last game because they had plenty of yards. Yeah, you know, lots of drive killers. Um, and you see that in the first the first games. I, I, all across the, the weekend, you know, watching the games, you saw drive killers constantly with penalties and stuff. And, you know, early on in the season, the defense is usually ahead of the offense. Yep. You know, again, we were spoiled the last couple of years because Nixon and the team was so were so good, you know, coming right off of the gates. But – we weren't so good coming out of the gates here, and you saw that our offense, or pardon me, that our defense was there. You yeah. didn't see that our offense was there, and that offensive line. And you, you wonder about some of the continuity, uh, you know, losing Bedford there and moving the guys around on that offensive line. But uh, you know, there's, there's there's not really any excuses you can do for the way the Idaho Vandal defensive line stunted, and th they yeah. knocked us back. They, they were all over the place. They were super uh, disciplined in where they are at. They hit their assignments. It was crazy. I was just like, what's going on here? And, and they know, made <laughs> tackles when they needed to. They didn't mm -hmm. miss a lot of tackles, and they just, yeah, like you said, they had some stunts and some twists that really kind of threw off the offensive line. And, and you're right, Jerry, moving Poncho from center over to right guard, 
And then you have Charlie Pickard, the, the walk-on out of Portland. He came in. He played, you know, he played all right for a walk-in kid. Uh, glad to see that he could make that dream come true for him. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm not in full panic mode yet. You no, know, you read no. some of the boards and you read all the, the talking heads. Oh, the offensive line, that's it's the first game. And let's get them, you know. Landing will have him prepared. Yeah, I was telling Jeff just before we <laughs> turned on the videos, I didn't watch anything. I haven't watched an interview. I didn't watch, you know, I just just the, the, the fresh feel of it, you know, in my in my own head about, you know, how do I feel about this game? What happened here? And certainly no panic on this part. Right. You know, next week we got Boise State coming in here, who was his team historically that we've had a really mm-hmm. tough time with. Yeah. Um, you, you just don't want to hang over from that first game. The, the little bit of... Uh, you know, post-game interviews that I heard as I was driving home, um, you know, the guys weren't too panicked about it, and they were disappointed in their own performance and yeah. stuff. And I I, uh, I think I heard a, a Tez Johnson talking about, uh, you know, hey, we're going to go to the doctor. We're going to fix some things. We came out a little flat. He talked about Dylan Gabriel being a little hesitant and stuff. And, you know, if you look at stats, he looked like the bright spot, 41 and 49, mm-hmm. 380 300, yards. You know, yeah. it looks like a pretty good game. But right. as you watched it unfold out there, it didn't flow as well as you would have liked to it, it to flow. Some of that yeah. comes, too, with, you know, with, with, with your, your offense hitting all cylinders. And, you know, you hit a couple of passes, you hit a couple of runs. The running game was not there early on. I, I think at the half we had something like 45 yards or something like yeah. that. Just, you you got to hit some of those and start piling up some first downs to get that exactly. continuity going. And that just didn't really happen. Some of it was drive killers with mm-hmm. the offensive line doing it. It was just, you know, early game. <laughs> some <laughs> of it with, uh, you know, with like you said, with the offensive line not gelling and m- making their blocks and, and missing some stuff. Uh, that really tightens up the running game. You need that running game to flow to loosen up the passing game. And it felt like uh, Gabriel wasn't able to go through his progressions because he had guys in the backfield almost immediately. So it was like dump off, dump off, dump off. And it was, you know, yeah, he played well. He threw the ball well. But he didn't have time to really go through his progressions, go first, second, third receiver, and find those open guys downfield. You know, I don't think he saw – he didn't feel the pressure very well. He didn't get out of the pocket at all. And so I Mm -hmm. think that if Dylan would have run the ball a little bit, I think that would have softened up the defense and made it spread out the linebackers a little bit. So at least there could be some running lanes up the middle for Jordan James. James, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And and I'm wondering if that was by design, you know, being the first game of the season, you don't want to show your hand completely. There was one uh, play, I think it was in the third quarter, where – Dylan had an open field ahead of him. He was in the backfield. Mm -hmm. The line separated, and I was like, run! And he just stood there and looked for his receivers. And I I, I get it. You don't want to injure your quarterback in the first game of the season. So, okay, yes, we were still winning. It was closer than it wanted it to be. But, uh, yeah, just let him throw and there don't were, don't injure yourself in the, right out of the gate <laughs> there were a few of those where my wife was screaming at him why isn't he running that and i'm like hey, easy but i remember i remember it was you or when we when we we were looking at each other again i was like gosh it feels like idaho's in our playbook the way they were shutting yeah, down like, sure did. the the quick throws they took those away some of those quick outs and stuff mm-hmm. they you know they were they were up on the line in in certain cases where i'm thinking how come how come they're up on the line in this when that's the pass we're going to do out there and then they were in that 5 you know 5 to 7 yard range right mm-hmm. off the line we had a little bit of room at 15 to 20 yards but that's a, a much more difficult throw and he hit he hit some of those but boy that the, the defense was prepared you know just mm-hmm. seeing it from from our vantage point this year mm-hmm. different seats and mm-hmm. stuff just seeing where the holes were in that defense it's just like okay they're there let's You'll see some adjustments. We're going to do it. I I don't know we ever saw adjustments. I think Weiss is predictable just with his playbook offensively. And I think that's why Idaho was prepared because I think that they ran the same plays that they ran a lot last year. So they knew exactly – they did know. Will Stein? Yeah, Will Stein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, I I think that uh, that that was part of the issue there. I think they really did know part of the playbook, and they were prepared. They were very well prepared, like you said, Jerry. And so uh, what, do, what do you do? You come out and you play hard. They had, shoot, almost, what, 500 yards of total offense, and Idaho, they had like 220 yards of offense. So yeah. it's just like, my gosh, you had a couple of big plays, and you got a couple of touchdowns there. But other than that, the Ducks pretty much dominated. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And, and those touchdowns that they got were trick plays. I mean, the flea flicker mm -hmm. for the touchdown. Uh, defense, I have no concerns over. I mean, the two guys that we got out of that portal on the D-line, uh, Jamari Caldwell and Derek Harmon, studs all game long. Brandon Johnson, that incredible interception that he made in the end zone. That was oh, so good. That was great. Mateo Uyunglele. Yeah. You know, big gosh, tackles. A couple yeah. of sacks. Yeah. Played very well. Tatum Tuiati still. That guy is so fast to me. Number 44 in there. Mm -hmm. When that, Every time that guy comes in, I'm like, my eyes are finding him and watching him go. Because that guy, uh, he's a beast. You know, yeah. he's, he's, he's Mateo's backup right now. But, man, that guy can really move. Uh, what kind of concerned me a little bit uh, was that Bassa and Jacobs hardly played at all in the inside linebackers. I mean, you had... Uh, Bryce Bedeker and Devin Jackson played a lot of the game, and I don't know if that was by design or if they were both nicked up a little bit or well, there what was, the deal there, was. There, and again, I haven't watched any interviews yet, but I heard that Bossa might have gone down a little bit, and they were really precautionary with him yeah. and kind of took him out and just said, hey, let's just play it safe. You know, We're playing against Idaho, but <laughs> well, right. they gave us all we could handle. They did. Yeah, no yeah. kidding, but it was, you know, First game out of the gate, you've got a team that was probably looking out for you right when the season ended last year. So they were preparing Ducks number three in the country. And, you know, I th I think that the Ducks, they probably, they maybe they thought they were overconfident a little bit coming Indeed. in. They were just yep. going to blow them out. Yep. And, yeah, maybe they were a little flat coming out of the gate but because they're your, you're a 45-point favorite. And all of a sudden, you're coming in here, and these guys, oh, my gosh, well, they're playing you pretty tough. And right. so then it takes you a little while to get your momentum back, if you can get it back at all. And the Ducks did. I mean, shoot, it was 14 nothing at halftime, so they were okay. It's just when they came out of the half, it's just like, my gosh, what team is this? It's right. like Mike Tyson. Everybody has a game plan until they get hit, until they get punched in the mouth. You know? <laughs> right. And I, Idaho came out and punched us in the mouth from the beginning. You know, It certainly wasn't a knockout blow, but they right off the bat signaled that they were going to be competitive in this game and it uh you know it, it was weird because i was watching guys you know, evan stewart i was so excited to see evan stewart play you know and he was fast and he was quick in and out of cuts Dylan didn't have enough time to let that play develop to, to do something with right. it it was just just off I mean, it, it's just so strange you know yeah, ferguson had a line. great game at tight end i mean he was the leading receiver for the ducks and you get that guy the ball and he is just a horse He'll run people over. He just has a knack of getting wide open in the flat and over the middle. And he's your go-to guy right now, except for Tez Johnson. He had a great game, too. Would he have a touchdown in there, too? That was a great play on the end zone, you know, to, uh, to finish that up in the fourth quarter to, to uh, make it 24-14. to 14. So, you know, they have a great receiving crew. But, yeah, we have to get – Dylan's got to have time. And the offensive line has got a block, and it just seems like, man, we were so frustrated at that game, watching the offensive line not be able to open up holes and also not to protect, protect Dylan uh, Gabriel and allowing three sacks for crying out loud. I mean, my gosh, that's what uh, Nick's had all season last year. <laughs> yeah. Five the last two, you know what Gee, I mean? Come on now. Uh, you know, the, the other the, – tight ends all day long. I thought Patrick Herbert had a good game. Um, he, he was mostly needed to protect the quarterback. But uh, Kenyon Sadiq, they had a lot of game planning for him. You know, they, they uh, ran the end around with him. I absolutely hated that uh, – fake punt, whatever you want to call yeah. that, whatever they did where where he took it and went around the end and it didn't fool Idaho at all. And where it happened on the field and then leads to that flea flicker and just, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh. Insult to injury on that one. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. But, and again, another learning experience. Okay, you, you come out with a win. I mean, everybody's saying, okay, you know, some wins are ugly and you got to get Absolutely. away with these things and you got to get lucky sometimes. And did the Ducks get lucky? No, nah, I don't think they did. I think that they were in control the entire time. But, I got to be honest. When it became seventeen to fourteen, it's like, uh, okay, now Idaho's in the game. What are you going to do, Ducks? You guys, but I'm telling you, they they went down the field. They scored when they had to, and they looked really, really good doing it. So that's all they have to do. Realistically, just keep that momentum going, and hopefully, they can do that on that last drive. Absolutely, we could have been uh, LSU today, or we could have been, you know, Florida State getting upset in the first game, or Virginia Tech. Oh, right. <laughs> Losing to Vanderbilt. <laughs> yeah. you know, that was a bad one. Yeah. So, yes. uh, Jeff Morgan, Jerry Harris, Brandon Haynes on the outside there. Uh, we're going to call you the defensive end on the I left like side. Over there. 
He's got Left sides of the strong side. His duck hat. You gotta love that, Jerry. I don't know. You got your Creekside hat on. I don't know where you've been, but uh, well, all my duck visor. hats are, are, are green, and I thought the green screen might mess it up. So I don't know. I didn't. I didn't want that. You need to invest in yellow. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so our sponsors again. Let's uh, let's mention them. Uh, you got Capital Nissan right down there off of the Parkway and uh, Cherry Avenue. We've got Green Acres Landscape and GA at Home out there off Gaffin Road and Highway 22. Appreciate their sponsorship and Advantage Heating and Air and Electrical. Thanks to all three of you for supporting us on this venture here, the podcast. And uh, this is fun. I, I like doing this uh, at the beginning of the week. I mentioned that before, but it's just it's good while it's yeah. fresh in your mind. And then looking forward to Boise State on Saturday, 7 p.m. kickoff, which I, I can't stand 7 p.m. It's like you're not getting <laughs> home till 1 o'clock when, when it's all said and done. Uh, so, but you know what? It's going to be hot. It's supposed to be 93 Another degrees again. Day. So a seven o'clock is probably <laughs> going to bode so. well for me. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's going to be another, another oh, hot one. Boy. So, uh, Boise state, uh, taking on Georgia Southern at Georgia Southern this past Saturday. And, uh, that was actually a no defensive game right there or lack thereof. Uh, what did Boise state end up with? Uh, my gosh, 56 to 45, and they were down in the fourth quarter and scored 21 unanswered points against Georgia Southern. And uh, who is their running back? My gosh, I can't read the Ashton Jonte. Is Jonte. that how you spell his last name or <laughs> yeah. say his last name? I like the way you say it. Jonte. So just go with that. Jonte. Yeah, Jonte. <laughs> it, sound, it sounds, it it's looks French, French to me. I mean, it's, it's kind of blurry to me, but that's okay. Uh, 267 yards on the ground, six touchdowns. Uh, Georgia Southern, the Duck defense is not going to be the Georgia Southern no. defense. I can guarantee you that. That was the that was the bright spot, I think, for the Oregon Ducks uh, this past Saturday. Just that defensive line holding. I they were under 50 yards rushing for the entire game. So, you know, you got to look out for the quarterback though too. I mean, he slung the ball pretty stinking well. Uh, what is his name? It's it's Madden. Madden Madsen, I believe, is Maddox Madsen is what Maddox his name Madsen. is. And uh, what, did he, what did he throw for? 200 and, well, he had 280 yards passing, a touchdown and an interception. So I'd say that's a pretty stinking good day, too. So there, what is his name again? Sounds like a comic book character. Maddox, the M the Maddox Peter Madsen. Parker. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Pick the pepper. I mean, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maddox Madsen. So we'll, have, we'll get a bird's eye view from this guy, you know, coming up on Saturday. But it seems like this team... From what it looks like, they're pretty well-rounded offensively. Defensively, not so much. So are we going to be seeing another shootout on Saturday evening? You know, it's, it's hard to go from one year to the uh -huh. next, but we've had such a hard time with Boise State, obviously. We have the not past. beat them, actually. But they've always been so disciplined. They've always had great defense in the past, and they always had a great defensive game plan against us. I wonder, too, first game of the year, were they looking past Georgia Southern and planning and, you know, Waiting for the Ducks to get here and game planning uh, against the Ducks. I don't think so. I, 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 you know, hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> you I never know what's so. going on with that. Um, but if if they couldn't hold Georgia Southern, <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> under 20 points, under 30 points, right? When they say 38, something like that. 40. Oh, they had 45. 45. 45. Actually, yeah, that's a lot of points. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I can't believe that they could bottle us up. No. <laughs> After that, there's not a chance. And and I think you'll see a little bit more of uh, the playbook being opened up, you know, and maybe these open gaps that Gabriel has, he'll go for it. Whereas this past game, he just was not. The improvement from game one to game two is always the biggest. I yep. mean, you, you think about when we when we had that debacle against Georgia, we came back and played pretty solid yeah. ball the rest of that year. But the 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 game the, the game plan after this. I know Dylan Gabriel, his first uh, game with that unit and all that stuff. He'll come out a lot more comfortable yeah. in the next game. He's not gonna he's not gonna have those type of jitters and some of that hesitation that he had in this game. And I think the game plan will probably, you know, Will Stein will step up and the game plan will probably have a lot probably. Don't want to put that out. The game plan will have <laughs> <laughs> a lot more decisive plays that knows where they're going. And, uh, you know, hit their targets. Well, and I wonder, too, you know, with some of the, you know, you had the illegal formation where a Johnny Cornelius was lined up a little bit off the line. And guys Several were like, you're them. calling it mm -hmm. on a Johnny. Connerly Jr. is lined up even farther back than he is. So how much of it is going from a Pac-12 ref to the Big, tw Big Ten refs? You know, where before Pac-12 refs might not have called that. But then the pass interference one where there was a big pass interference no call, it was like, 
oh, okay, I guess they're going to let them play football. <laughs> so It's hard to know. You're yeah. absolutely right. And I think there's a lot of things that you have to get used to, and every game's going to yeah. be different because you're going to have a different uh, umpiring crew every single game. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't think that you can really play much on that. If they call it, great. If they don't, then that's okay because, uh, I think again, it's going to be different every game. But There's I re- at least two, I think three of those, and it had me watching the LSU game, LSU-USC game and seeing where those guys were lined up. And they were way off the line. Yeah. I'm like, where's the flag on this? It's just like, right. come on, it's the same rule, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but so. uh, but a different individual. And uh, uh, But you know what? I, I'm i looking forward to not having Pac-12 refs, to be honest with oh, you. Oh, gosh, yeah, me too. My they gosh, what a nightmare those have, those have been. We've com- <laughs> we complained about them, well, forever. <laughs> So yeah. uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how the Big Ten refs. So hopefully they didn't do any recruiting on the uh, guys that are out oh, of I a know, job right? now. Oh, this guy's got experience. Uh, where did he where did he ref? Oh, oh maybe maybe we go somewhere else. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I have to be honest. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to Dylan Gabriel. And I want to see uh, how he comes out this time, and I, I think we're going to see him run the football because that's what made Bo Nix so much better last year and the year before. He knew when to pull it down and run the ball, and he could get. I don't care if you're just getting seven eight yards, go down. You don't have to take the hit. You just need to get positive yards and not go back five. Right. So if, if you can get away from those negative plays like that, that's three negative plays that uh, really hurt, th- obviously, three drives. So if you can eliminate that, I think that uh, that's going to that's gonna benefit you uh, tremendously. Well, it is tough to criticize a guy that went 41 of 49 for 380 something. Well, if you're going to, that's what you're but... going to do. <laughs> I, I tell you, I saw a lot of zip on his passes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He fitted into tight window, windows when he decided he was going to a certain guy. Um, I mean, there was a lot to be, you know, really excited about. And, and obviously, his career speaks for itself in his, his previous two stops. Yeah. So it, it's there. The talent is clearly there. Just a little sloppy that first game. You know, it, yeah. but it's going to be that way. I mean, this is, his, again, his first game at Autzen Stadium. I mean, everybody's psyched up. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on these guys because they've been touted. Everybody's been touting them to be national champion. Not everybody, but two out of five on ESPN, Herb Street, and somebody else. I can't remember. It wasn't McAfee. I think uh, he picked George. Oh, Des. it was Des. Desmond. That's right. Yeah. Desmond Howard. So you got two of those guys. So the pressure is there. I mean, and you're thinking about that, and now you have to perform. That's going to affect a little bit coming out of the gate. And I think that they were a little bit too high on themselves, and now they've got to plug back into reality. And I, I wouldn't doubt it if the Ducks end up being number 10, dropping from number 3 this week. Well, that wouldn't surprise Not me. Not that it all. matters. And, and quite yeah, frankly, I, I think that's the one thing that, that the BCS had right back when they did it. They didn't come out with a uh, a ranking until, you know, three quarters of the season was right. over. Mm-hmm. And none of none of this early stuff matters. It no. was nice to be up there uh, right mm-hmm. off the bat, but I think it is going to take a, a loss, which I don't think will happen. Uh, uh, Really, I think it's going to take a loss until uh, to really make us drop down. But I can see some movement in there early on, just from early, you know, first game perception. There were so many good games, though. People blowing people. Alabama, for example. I mean, throttled. Who I can't even remember who they played. Probably Chattanooga. I wouldn't doubt it. But uh, <laughs> there were game. There were teams that really played well. Michigan, for example, they played really well. Uh, the Ducks just did not come out and and play well. They didn't perform. If you're a top three team, you can't. You win twenty four to fourteen. You're going down. It's just the way it is, especially early on. It's to, even if you did not lose, it's going to happen. It's perception. Everything's perceived. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. It's all about perception in college football. It's, it's what makes it so much fun to argue about it. I'm just happy football is finally here so I don't have to argue about politics with all the darn people on Facebook any- exactly. <laughs> anymore. Exactly. <laughs> just stick exactly. to ESPN, Jared. <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh. That is so funny. Well, and, and to go back, you know, we're not – criticizing Gabriel it's more of mm-hmm. a construct or it's a constructive criticism of hey yeah you played great but you know we want to see these types of plays because this is the guy that we had last year the last two years Bo Nix and even Bo last year didn't run as much last year as he did his first year here you know when he got hurt in that Washington game the yeah. first year yes they really kind of shut him down. It reminds me of the year we didn't unleash Herbert and let on. him run at all until, you know, the the uh, game against Utah where we let him run. And he broke his collarbone? Is that the game? Well, that was, that, was, that, was the that was the year before. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I don't – I think Lanning has uh, – Coach Lanning has said, hey, we don't need to get you injured in this first game. And, and we're sitting here saying, well, you should have done this and you should have done that. But, you know what, at the end of the day, like you said, 41 of 49, 380 yards – that's what you're asking your quarterback to do, and we won the game. So. I think the penalties, they were key. I mean, if we eliminated 
half of those penalties, I think the Ducks probably score about 34 points. They got 10 more at least, if not 30, 34, 39, uh, somewhere in that vicinity. And then that's respectable. Yeah. It is. Yep. So uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to the game, though. Like night games. What are you laughing at, man? I, I don't know. Something's poking out of that door over there. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm easily distracted. I, uh, squirrel. Yeah, that is great. <laughs> Well, we don't have a whole heck of a lot left uh, time left in the podcast, but uh, I know this is going to air on KYKN2 on, uh, on Tuesday afternoon. So uh, we're saying podcast, but it could, you could say radio, too. You could say what you know what you could really say whatever you like. All right, guys. So what do you think? Uh, what, do you, what do you think about the Boise State game just in its entirety? Uh, just looking at both teams, both games that they've played coming into Autzen Stadium. Uh, the crowd, I think, is going to be a little bit more boisterous than it was this past Saturday. I think everybody was uh, sweating their rear ends off because it was stinking hot. And, you know, I think that had something to do with the players. That had to affect it. It's got to be a about a buck 10, buck 20 on the field. I mean, I don't care how old you are. I mean, you got that uni on and you're sweating your you know what off. I still can't get enough fluids and it's, it's yeah, Monday it was, now. <laughs> I mean, I don't. They, they needed to have like 80 buckets of you know, never water down there on the why? field. The home side of the field is in the sun. Why well, because we winter putting... comes. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it gets cold in the it shade. Does. Is that a Game of Thrones reference? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, well, you know, I haven't, I haven't seen Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones but... Uh, You're the one. Okay. That's me. All right. Yeah. All right. I, I, I haven't done that. I hear it's pretty good. <laughs> just, don't well, watch, just, don't last, just don't watch the last season. <laughs> no, it, oh, I, I am excited to see Boise State come in uh, and play at Oregon, and I'm excited to see a Ducks victory this Saturday. So, so what do you? I mean, wh- well, what do you? What do you think that score is going to be? I mean, I think offensively, the Ducks definitely need to show up. There's yeah. no doubt about that. Eliminate the penalties because I, I know that Boise State they they will score. There's no doubt about that. This is not an Idaho offense. Uh, we cannot let we cannot make them look good. So. The thing about Boise State is their their running back is good, mm-hmm. and I, I I was trying to you know, I was trying to think of who I would compare these guys to uh, you know and I, I was thinking about the Colorado game last year because there was so much hype around the Colorado game and Colorado was going to come in and with that high powered offense and they were going to play so well against us and how are we going to hold up against them and then we went out and boat raced them forty four to six or whatever that was, yeah. um, but. The running game. The running game is the great equalizer. If you can, if, if ball control. If they can yep. keep the ball and and you know get some first downs and stuff, keep the ball out of our hands, keep that rhythm away from us. That that's the kind of thing that that's the only part of this game at all that worries me. And other than the fact that it's Boise State, and I don't want to go down to Boise State again. Again, yeah, again. <laughs> we don't want to have exactly. a Legarrette Blunt for oh, our shiver. Gosh, yes. But I, I, you know, I think the game plan is probably the both for both teams, or probably the same for both teams. Uh, you have to stop the running game. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you can do that, if you can run the ball and stop the running game, uh, that that is going to produce a win, bar none. Nick Aliotti, I remember him talking on the Pac-12 network all the time, and he'd always say that. Rule number one of the defense, stop the run. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think this defense is built to stop the run. Oh, absolutely. I, 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 think def- I don't have any, any issues over how the defense played last week. Maybe, I mean, if you want to nitpick, you could say the linebacker play was a little sloppy. There were a few times where, heck, Devin Jackson was facing the other way when they were throwing the ball, and it was like, hey, man, you got to be looking towards the team. Not there were the a end handful zone. of missed assignments, but overall, yeah. I, the, the, the line was terrific. And, yeah. But there were some missed assignments, both on the linebackers and the safeties. But yeah. it, overall, I thought they played really good. You're going to have that on occasion. Yeah, yep. yeah and, and I, I, I think you're right, Jeff, that the key to the game is to get the run game going. And so I'm really hoping that Coach Lanning and Coach Terry are – beating on those offensive linemen this week, you know, running extra laps, <laughs> doing what they need to do, get that tightened up, uh, get rid of the sloppy play, and, uh, you know, I think they'll, they'll, they'll find be an awful lot of game film watched. All right. Hey, you've been listening to Raining Ducks right here um, in the studio. Uh, we'll be back next week uh, at, on Tuesdays, and uh, we'll see you then. Look forward to it. Enjoy. Until then. Enjoy your week, and uh, we'll be back next week. Take care, everybody. Go Ducks. Go Ducks.